Hello and welcome to chapter 31. So Stefan is trying to uh, get his laptop and wenige Minuten später kommt er enttäuscht zurück. This is one sentence and uh, we have a verb that is common and zurück well contains zu. Maybe that's a little indication that this belongs together. Zurück kommen, you know, zurück by now. Uh, back so and so he comes back yeah and you see here in f on the first position we can have a combination of words it doesn't have to be the subject which is er he the subject is always what um, does the action so he is coming back yeah wenige minuten so you see minuten so minutes and very likely it means later and you have spät which means late and uh, Germans like to play with their spades in the evening and dig holes, whatever sinister image that evokes in your brain. Um, you can also imagine they play air guitar with them, but that helps you to remember that spät means late. And the ER is clear, right? So it's the same in English, late, er, wenig. I actually didn't look up where it comes from, but it is, maybe it's related to Wayne, something that becomes less and less. So this means few minutes later. And he comes back and täuscht. We might have talked about this. Täuschen is related to tauschen, which means to swap. And if you swap reality with an image, then chances are high that you get deceived. And if you and deceive someone, you get basically um, well, disillusioned, right? So the Germans, when they get disillusioned, they're always disappointed in themselves that they have been deluded. So enttäuscht means to remove the deception. And in English, somehow that turned into disappointed. Ich finde meine Laptop-Tasche nicht mehr. Well, I think this one really um, is pretty easy, right? Simone verdreht die Augen, typisch Stefan. Well, Simone is doing something with her Augen, and Augen, um, well, how can I say that? Well, there's a Y in there and an E, and the AU turned into an E. Yeah, so it's the eyes, and you can see the plural here. And drehen um, to turn, and she turns her eyes, basically means she does like this. Yeah, she rolls her eyes, and um, verdrehen simply means um, the result, or the, the thing she does with her eyes results in turning. Like, the typical, typically Stefan. Wo hast du sie denn zum letzten Mal gesehen? And actually before I continue this. Ja. Yeah. Sorry. Wo hast du sie denn das letzte Mal gesehen? Wo? Uh, just a reminder, it's a nice game. In English, who is where and where is wo? And uh, that's always a bit messy, but once you're aware, uh, one good thing to remember this uh, is where is Dr. Who? Yeah, and you remember that, or Dr. Wo in German, yeah, and then you actually remember that Wo means where. So, where have you Z? He was just referring to his laptop bag. Uh, which is feminine, yeah, her, the, the Tasche. The den is just emphasis and das letzte Mal, the, well, last, yeah, you have, basically you have it like this, but it's last and time and seen is obvious, I hope. So where have you seen it uh, the, for the last time or Lately. Stefan überlegt eine Minute. Überlegen, literally, overlay, 
and if you lay thought over thought over thought you simply um, get into pondering so he's pondering he's thinking in english you would use thinking but it's kind of a pondering because that's me überlegen let me think yeah so let me think a bit longer longer thinking and you know if you put layer over layer over layer of course it takes a bit longer als wir bei der alten dame zu besuch waren Good. Here we have Waren at the end and uh, nothing else here, no other verbs, so this one must be a pusher. I call these words pushers, officially they are called Nebensatzkonjunktionen um, or they are also called subjunctions, subjunctionen, depends on what grammar you touch. Yeah, because they subordinate somehow uh, to the main clause. This is not the main information. Yeah. And uh, whenever you have this subjunction or conjunction, it pushes the verb to the end, the main verb. Yeah, I call them pusher because they push. So when we add the old, yeah, you see alt and old, um, dame, which is the old lady, to the visit. Any capitalized word is basically the something. Yeah? Of course, you wouldn't say it to the visit were. Yeah, there once was a war, so the plural of was is war, waren. And one other interesting thing, well, you can also have alter, so it would, would not be older, it would actually be age. So here we kind of are a bit inconsistent, yeah, but you get the idea. Just as a little side note. Ach, Stefan, warum bist du nur so vergesslich? Ach, it's kind of, man, yeah, so like, hmm. so not really, I have no better translation. And warum, you remember that, was and um, basically, that's the origin, at least I see it like this, and that means, uh, why? So what about, or like, what about your vergesslich guide? So why are you only so and vergesslich and vergessen somehow is related to getan and that means to obtain and fair here can have a couple of functions but um, here it means the opposite turning it into the opposite so the opposite of obtaining is basically to lose and when you forget something and you see here get uh, getan uh, you lose something that you had obtained before. Yeah? Very nice. So why are you only so forgetful? The Lich gives away. Uh, it's a adjective or in, in this case um, adverb. Am Morgen besuchen Simone und Stefan Frau Kaiser erneut. Besuchen, verb, second position. And you see Am Morgen is in front, Simone und Stefan is after that, and uh, that means uh, the subject comes after the verb. That's a very common thing. In English, you would actually do it like this. Simon und Stefan besuchen Frau Kaiserneut. But this is English and not correct in German. So you have to fight the urge to put the verb here. Don't do that. So, am Morgen, at the morning, which means in the morning. And besuchen, they search. Yeah, Simone and Stefan. So they, they don't really search, they actually visit. In order to visit, you need to search the address of the person you want to visit. And they are visiting whom? Frau Kaiser. And if you don't understand erneut, you understand new. So basically, a uh, new. Yeah, and you could also say again. So they are visiting her again in the morning. There's two things that, uh, one thing you need to know, you have Morgen, Morgen, like in Guten Morgen, good morning, and then you have Morgen, like in tomorrow. Yeah, you see the similarity, I hope. So, Guten Morgen, good morning is the morning, and this one is tomorrow, it's always lowercase.
Die alte Dame freut sich sichtlich über die beiden und lädt sie zum Frühstück ein. These are two sentences. Yeah, the old dame freuen or sich freuen um, is a very important verb. Um, you have sich freuen über, like here, so about, and then you have sich freuen auf. You don't have to remember the difference. Um, looking forward to, be happy about. So quite a different meaning, right? Although they both contain joy, if you're looking forward to doing something, there possibly is some joy in it. Yeah? Otherwise, why would you look forward to it? So, uh, Sicht, we had that in different contexts before. Uh, it is related to sight, so sightly, which means obviously. Yeah? She's obviously looking for, uh, well, happy about the Bidens. Both of them. And what does she do? She led, and the ein belongs to laden, einladen, loads. She, oh, actually, sorry, this one is referring to Stefan, uh, because uh, basically you have die alte Dame here in front of that, but you wouldn't put it there, because uh, it, it is unnecessary to repeat it. Yeah, so, and the old lady loads them to the Frühstück. Remember Frühstück? Früh, early, Gegenteil von spät. And Stück is a stick, is a piece of a tree, yeah, it's a piece of something. So she loads them in, she invites them to the early piece, which is your breakfast. Stefans Laptop hat sie vorsorglich in den Schrank getan. Here we have two verbs, hat, getan. This one is a so-called auxiliary verb. And we call this Hilfsverb. From Hilfe, so it's a helper verb, it's helping, getan. And this getan has nothing to do with the one from forget, forgetan. Uh, this is the past of tun, which is in English the same to do. And you have the N in done again, if you want to go there. So Stefan's laptop has she, that's the woman, uh, she has some, done something to Stefan's laptop. And what has she done? Uh, she has, well, funny enough, here, uh, this actually means she put it there. And she put it into the shrank into the Schrank. And you know who's in the Schrank? And that's the Shrink. The Shrink is in the wardrobe, always, in Germany. So she put it in the wardrobe. Yeah? She has done it into the wardrobe. And vorsorglich is an interesting word to look at. Let's take a look. It contains four pre. And Sorge is the sorrow, it's the same word, the G turned into W. Um, and if you are in sorrow, um, to pre-sorrow means to avoid sorrow, yeah, like um, preemptively. Pre-sorrowly, which means um, in it, in in, I actually don't know. Precautionary. Oh, that's nice then. Yeah, I wouldn't know the word. Cautionary. So precautionary in German means uh, avoiding sorrow. So she put it there to avoid sorrow. Obwohl sie Munde schon eine, Kaffee, eine Kanne Kaffee getrunken hat, nimmt sie die Einladung an. Well, if well would be my literal translation, but obwohl means although. Yeah, although. I see no other connection here, obwohl Simone already a can. It's not a can, but it's related to can. Um, how do you call it? A big pot where you have more than just one cup, coffee. Yeah, and in German that comes from can. And getrunken, you understand the word easily. It's the same, drunk, has. And you see at the end there is a verb. That means this is pushed and therefore obwohl must be a pusher, 
And you don't need a list of these pushers. You will actually recognize them already quickly because you see if there's a verb at the end, it can only be because there's either a, a verb on the second position, another verb already, but if there isn't, then it must be a pusher. Yeah. So an belongs to nehmen. Yeah. Nimmt is basically nehmen. Annehmen is to take on, which means to accept. And she accepts the in loading, which is the invitation. Sie will nicht unhöflich sein. The will nicht is possibly uh, easy to understand. We have the unhöflich. We had that before, but it comes from Hof, which is the court. And at the king's court, you have a certain demeanor. You uh, are polite and therefore uh, is related to uh, Curtis, Curtis, how to say, Curtis. Yeah, höflich is kind of um, applying courtesy. You, you have the word in English, I cannot pronounce it. And it means simply polite. And uh, unhöflich turns it into impolite. So she wants not impolite to be. Die alte Dame ist immer so freundlich zu ihr und Stefan. She is immer, always, so friend, freund, friendly to her and Stefan. Easy sentence for the end. Hope you liked it. That was chapter 31 and see you in chapter 32.